Hi guys, today I'm here with Bailey, my black-headed Kaik, and the Puff Man, my white-bellied Kaik, and today's video is going to be on signs to look for when your parrots are not feeling well. Are you ready guys? And Miss Victoria Cockatoo is walking on the ground, so she might join us, I don't know. In the wild, predators look for signs of illness or weakness. Prey animals such as parrots must appear healthy at all times or they will become someone's lunch. In captivity, our parrots' instincts are strong and they will hide their illness. That is why it is important to be aware of your parrot's signs of illness and know what to look for. Right guys? Yes. Twice a day, I do a health inspection of my birds. I start from the head and I work all the way down to their poop. So the first thing I do is when I walk into the room, I uncover their cages and I take a peek where they were sleeping. Now, I've known these birds for a long time, so I know their behaviors. And if something's off, I'm gonna notice it. So if I see a bird that's on the ground, that usually is not a good sign at all. So if you got a bird that is on the ground, you might wanna take them into your avian vet. If I notice a bird is all of a sudden hanging on the side of the cage, that's not a good sign as well. Are you gonna scream the whole time? No? Okay. If I see them comfortably sleeping with one leg up and their head tucked under their wings looking so cute, that's a good sign. How does the coloring of their feathers look? Do they look dull? Do they look bright? Do they have broken feathers? So things to look for, doll feathers can mean a number of things. It can mean there's a liver problem, a dietary problem. So always look at their feathers. And Puffy, now that's a good looking bird. You look so handsome. You're gonna scream through this whole video, aren't you? You probably will. All right, I'm here with all three of my dinosaurs. So this is where my hair gets messed up. Another thing you want to really pay attention to is your bird's breathing. How are they breathing? Is it a labored breathing? It, or is their tail bobbing? So a bird that's at the bottom of the cage and they're kind of panting, which Puffy was doing one day and his tail was bobbing and his wings were up because he was trying to make more air inside his air sacs is a really bad sign. I don't know if you can hear me. Sorry, you want to get your bird to an avian vet if that happens immediately. It can mean a number of things and it's usually not good. It could be upper respiratory, egg bound once again. So pay attention to their breathing. Another thing that you want to pay attention to is their weight. So you want to scale. I weigh my birds every day. And that way I can be on top of their weight. And all of a sudden when I go to the vet, I'm not like in shock, like, oh my gosh, my bird lost 20 grams. Ah! You know, you don't want to do that. So you want to stay on top of their weight. So weigh your birds every day. Whoa, hey, I, I, who did that? I don't even know who did what. Puppy, did you do that? Maui, no, don't do that. No, oh, 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 no. That's not nice, Puffy. I think he started it. Come here. No, did you just walk in poop? Okay. Okay. No, don't fight. Go back up there. Go back up. All right, no fighting. Bailey, come here. You're act actually innocent in this. So you wanna pay attention. You wanna pay attention to the weight. A bird that is gaining weight quickly can mean there is an egg forming inside. They can be egg bound or you have egg yolk forming. I have to really watch that with Victoria Cockatoo. She had a hysterectomy, but she can still produce egg yolk. So if that happens, it's not good. And she needs to go to the avian vet. Um, so I have to weigh her every day to stay on top of that. Also a bird losing weight means a bird is not eating or there are other issues, liver issues. It could be a hundred issues. Another reason to go see your avian vet. 
Bailey, where are you? Maui is my black headed Kaique. He is also a rescue. He's doing really good. And when he came to me, he was a naked bird. And when Victoria Cockatoo came to me, she was a naked bird and she still is a naked bird and she's perfect. She's absolutely perfect. But Maui grew his feathers back because his problem was the environment, uh, nutrition, and he was not feeling good. So he was plucking his feathers. He had a lot of anxiety and he suffers from PTSD. So I have to constantly stay on top of Maui's behavior, his environment. I have to make sure that he has plenty of things to do and that his diet is on point because if anything falters, he will start plucking again. So I have to stay on top of it. So if you have a bird that is starting to pluck, that is starting to barber their feathers, chew on their feathers, not pull them out, but barber them, kind of like what he does sometimes, then the first thing you want to do is take them in to see your avian vet because it could be health related. And it sometimes is. Another thing it could be is nutrition, which is also health related, or their cage setup. You gotta keep it exciting in their cage. You do not wanna create a nesting environment, so you wanna be careful of shredding uh, toys and things at the bottom of the cage, like boxes, I, which I do not do with Victoria. I do not do with these guys. You want them to work for their food, like wrap their food up in little, little pieces of paper and hide them, kind of like Easter, you know? Every day is Easter in their cage, that's what it is. Are you going to do an A cut? That's what you want to do. So you want to keep them super busy. So if you see a bird plucking, if you see a bird starting to chew, get them to your avian vet. That way you can rule out that it's not a health problem. And then you can take it from there. Right? Towards forest Yes. In my bird room, I really pay attention to my birds. What they're eating, how much they're eating, and are they fake eating? My parakeet, Khaleesi, who is this tiny and in a room with all these dinosaurs, can you even imagine how scary that is? I do my best to make her comfortable, but she still is in here. And those kayaks sometimes, they look at her like a cat is looking at a mouse. My kayaks like to hunt. So that is something that I really have to be careful with. And so one day I caught her, she was really busy eating, just do 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 do, pretending to eat. And I, but I was looking and nothing was really disappearing. So I weighed her and she started losing weight, but she was like doing all this eating action. So she was fake eating. I, so I took her to my avian vet and it turned out she was not feeling good. She had a small bacterial infection. Thank God I caught it on time because Parakeets, usually, by the time you notice that they were sick, they're dead. They're at the bottom of the cage and they're stiff. So you gotta really be on top of those little munchkins for sure. So I caught it on time. Thank God she had Beatrice and he also gave her a Lupron shot because she was a little hormonal. So she's doing much better, but that is an example of why you really need to investigate your birds really check them out from head to poop drinking water where are all my birds why is it so quiet i don't know about you but when they're quiet that means there's usually something bad happening so okay. <laughs> that was casey so silence kind of scares me with parrots but we're going to take advantage of it so drinking water how much water is your parrot drinking are they drinking a ton of water are they is their thirst never quenched like Bailey Bailey was just drinking a ton of water and then she would poop a ton of water and it was just going in and out in and out she was kind of like a lorikeet for a while so I was a bit worried and she was a little bit fluffed and she was just eating up a storm now she was really eating but it was just coming out she was starving basically so I took her to my avian vet and it turned out she has iron storage disease and that is in another video, I'll put the link below. So it was good that I paid attention to her water intake. That is what gave me the red flag for Bailey was how much water she was drinking. It was way too much. And then you might have a bird that's not drinking enough water and they can become dehydrated is what happened to Puppy one time when I was doing an expo. I thought he was drinking enough water, but he was not, and he became dehydrated, 
and I had to take him to the vet for fluids. So it's something that you really want to keep track of and always, always have water in your bird's cage at all times. They need it. God gave us poop so we could make sure our birds are feeling good. That is something that he has given to us, so we need to take advantage of it and we need to really investigate it. And when I mean investigating it, I mean get in there, smell your bird's poop, make sure it doesn't have like a horrid odor. And I mean, it can be bad sometimes. And when it's bad, it means they could have a bacterial infection, you know, it could be a million things, liver problems, you know, sky's the limit. So if you notice your bird's poop is not looking the way it should look for one or two days, one day if you see a bad poop, you want your red flag up. The next day, if you see poops that you're not happy with, you need to get on that phone, call your avian vet, at least let them know what's happening, shoot them a picture. I always send my avian vet poop pics. Unfortunately, I think it's at his dinner time, so you know, but he is such a cool guy and just sending a simple poop pic, email it, you know, whatever, to your avian vet is a good thing and you can stay on top of things. Another thing you wanna look at are their little nostrils. And right now the birds are pretty quiet because they saw a hawk. So I'm gonna take advantage of this hawk because everybody's just like, oh my God, it's gonna eat us. And we're filming and we're like looking out the window right now. My neighbors probably think I'm crazy, which I kind of am. But you wanna make sure that their little nostrils are clear. If you see any discharge, green, yellow, that usually means that your bird has an infection and you want to get them to your avian vet. And usually simple antibiotics, if that's what it is, will fix it, but it has to be the right kind of antibiotics. So it's important you always take your bird to the avian vet. Sometimes Victoria Cockatoo, her nose will run, it'll be clear. And so what will usually fix that is a good shower, or every day I will wet a warm cloth and I will just wipe her nostrils and I'll wipe her beak and I'll just get all that powder off of her because she's a cockatoo and it can irritate her. So nostrils, you definitely want to look at their nostrils. Right, Puffy? Yes! So another thing that I look for when I do my health inspection are their eyes. I look at their eyes. I want to see how they look. I want to make sure that they look bright and not dull, that the color is normal, that the eyes are not sunken in or droopy or have any goo on them. So right now, Miss Victoria Cockatoo's eyes look good, but she wants to play. She wants to play, yes. Yes. You're such a good girl. <laughs> So I'm here with Casey, my African Grey, and I get a lot of requests, why isn't she in the video? Because Casey doesn't like to film, so I thought I would take her out just for a second. She's a little scared, she's trembling. So that's how I know she's scared, and that is something that you want to also look at when you have a parrot. Are they trembling? you want to figure out why they're trembling. Now, Casey's trembling because she's a little scared right now. She doesn't quite know what's going on. She sees the big camera and the ring light, so she's just kind of like, what's happening? And the windows are wide open. There's no protection from hawks, she thinks, so she's trembling. Another reason a parrot might tremble is because they're cold. So you want to make sure the temperature in the room is at a comfortable temperature. Now, Casey is a feather plucker. She came to me feather plucked. I adopted her, so she gets cold easily. And because she's naked, that means she's using more energy. So she has to eat more. So I try to keep the room comfortable for them, especially her and Miss Victoria, who's also naked, because I don't want their body to be working extra time. And I just, being comfortable is way better, huh? Oh, and there, you're okay. And there comes Maui. My kayaks really aren't that nice to her. So trembling is something that you want to pay attention to. Figure out why your bird's trembling. Is it trembling because he doesn't feel good? Is he trembling because he's cold? Or is he trembling because they're scared? And in that case, Casey's a little nervous. Are you? Oh, we're doing a little better. So there's Miss Casey. Isn't she pretty? Yes? Seizures. 
That is something <laughs> Mr. Thomas can have. He hasn't had one in, I think it's a little while now, but it is something that he does suffer with. And it's a possibility he suffered head trauma. When he came to me, he was gray. Obviously, whoever had him was smoking cigarettes. He was in really bad shape. So if you notice that your bird is having seizures, it could mean a number of things. It doesn't mean that, you know, they were abused like poor Thomas was. It could mean they're having a vitamin deficiency. It's very common in grays that are not getting enough sunlight. Um, or there, it could be a number of things. So if your bird has a seizure, you want to get them to an avian vet immediately. And the way I stay on top of Thomas's seizures, are you going to regurgitate? My goodness. The way I stay on top of Thomas's seizures is I try to avoid them. So Thomas will have seizures when he feels that he's losing control of things. If he becomes scared or his last seizure was from a nightmare. So now he is sleeping in his carrier right next to my bed. So if he starts having a nightmare, I get up, I wake him up, I calm him down before that seizure can happen. So I avoid his seizures. Sometimes you can't avoid a seizure, but with Thomas, as long as he feels safe, happy, he will not have a seizure, right? Another thing I want to cover is vomiting and regurgitating. So there are two different things. Regurgitating is something a bird does when they are sexually excited or they're like in love with you. And you really want to try to avoid that. You don't want to punish them, but you want to distract them. And that's with a toy or maybe putting them on a different perch or get giving them a different food. You know, a distraction is good. Like with Thomas, when he starts to regurgitate, I will put him on top of his cage. I don't want to put him in his cage because I don't want it to feel like a punishment. Although my birds do love their cages because there's so much to do. And I will give them like a little treat and maybe turn on some music and just like act like nothing happened. Right? Now, vomiting. Vomiting is very serious when a parrot vomits. Now, Puffy was vomiting when he was not feeling good, and it was projectile. I mean, it was just coming out. It wasn't like, you know, like, you know, I'm excited. It was just, you could tell he was sick. So if your bird's doing that, it could be a number of things. Once again, they could have swallowed something. They've got something blocked. They can be sick. You really want to pay attention to are your parrot's feet. Feet will tell you so so much about your bird. If you look at the bottom of the feet, you can see if they have pressure sores. It can mean a number of things. Once again, you know, it could be a liver issue, your parrot's having health problems, or it could mean you do not have enough perch options in their cage. So what I do to avoid pressure sores is I have flat perches and I've got big, thick, round perches and I've got rope perches. So their feet are on a number of different things and they're just not in one position all the time, creating those pressure sores. Also poor diet, it can cause gout and gout is a liver issue. Also, you'll see birds that are picking at their feet that are biting at their feet. That could be a number of things. That could be a behavioral issue. That could be a health issue. Uh, so you want to be on top of that. It could be because maybe there's a pressure sore and their feet are hurting. It could be arthritis. So if you see any of those, it's always good to take your bird in to see their avian vet because what you do not want that behavior or that, that little picking to turn into mutilation where they really start tearing at their feet. And I've seen cockatoos do that. So you want to be on top of that. You want to stop it before it becomes a real problem. This was quite a video, huh, Thomas? Yes! You guys did so good. I'm going to have to edit probably for like 48 hours because there's going to be so much editing. But hopefully this video will help you be more aware of signs of illness so you can catch problems before they become big problems and keep your birds healthy. So I hope you found this video helpful and somewhat entertaining. We love making it for you guys. So we hope to see you soon. We love you guys. See you later. You ready? Yes. Is it time for dinner? Are you hungry? You're hungry, huh, Thomas?